pocket up at the top, we're going to group all the faces inside the part. Now what we'll use here is we'll use some propagation, which is this icon right here, grouping properties. Now, under grouping properties, under face, the most common one we use in YREDM are going to be the, uh, is the setting for vertical faces. Vertical faces are the most common. There's also a little sub-menu to the right of that, uh, which is real handy, called Wire EDM Walls Only. If you turn that on, you can set the maximum tilt angle of your Wire EDM machine, and uh, so that it won't try to grab any faces that exceed that angle, which is kind of handy. So hit OK. I can close this box now, and if I hold my Shift key down and pick one of the walls inside, it'll grab all of those walls inside the part. Now, normally, uh, you would want to also identify and pick a starter hole, a starter location, because otherwise we're not giving any information about how to start this pocket. But I'm going to show you a technique where you, re you don't have to do that if you don't want to. Uh, and so what we do next is we want now go right up to Draft Features. And in Draft Features, under Part Type, it's asking us what kind of part is this. Now, because it's a closed set of faces, it automatically identifies it as to either being a, a punch or a die, but it could also be other choices. Uh, here we could have an open left or open right. Uh, we could be a hole. It could be a turning profile. So we can choose which one suits uh, this this purpose. In this case, a die. Next is priority. Now, under priority, we have uh, three choices: draft conic only. Draft conic is a two-axis feature with or without taper or land. Draft conic then ruled means that it will try to make a draft conic feature first. And if that fails, it'll make a ruled feature. And a ruled feature is a four-axis feature. The most common setting is the draft conic then ruled. Next we have the X, Y, and UV planes. And what that does is it shows us the height of the part. Now it gets that from the model. So the faces will give this information here and show the, the UV location as being 0.196. So we're going to pick both 2 die and 3 die. Now why am I picking both? Well, so that if we do them both at the same time, it will create a feature group which will make it easy to edit both of these uh, taper and land dies at the same time. So we've chosen both of the dies, and we'll go back up to our solid wire gold, and go back in to do a contour. Now, of course, we could access contour again by going to machining, solid wire gold, and clicking contour. This does the exact same thing as picking the icon off of the smart toolbar. Now we go back to the general page. It has the same settings we had before. And we may end up using the same settings here on the stop. Okay, so we have the, the, the primary stop, the distance, secondary stop, and the slug stop. Now, when we go to cut data, what you're going to see a little bit different than you saw before is instead of just a primary cut section, there's now a land cut section. Now, the land cut section here uh, will only show up if the feature includes a land to it. So here we can say, okay, on the primary cut, which would be the cut with the taper, uh, the primary cut is going to be, say, a rough, uh, rough in one skim. But now let's say that on the strategy for the land cut, we want to do a rough in two skims. And on the land cut, we could tell it to suppress the rough, because we would have already roughed out the material and removed the slug with the primary cut. So we might change this and say suppress rough, yes. In fact, I think when we merge this solid, there's about 115 solids. But you can break it down into something simpler, which is what I've done. I've broken these down into about 10 or 12 solids. Uh, so I want this one, and add. And I want the little rail, and add. And I want the little wedge in the middle, and add. And then this screw right here, and add. And that should be all of those components. So when you're done, we hit OK, and now all those fixtures are added to this for simulation. So if I single step my simulation, now in addition to my blocks of material, I have those fixtures. So I can now watch the simulation a little more detail. And of course I can still view it, look at it, etc. while those fixtures are in place. And so feel free to use any of those fixtures by doing what we just did, which was to open and merge them. Now if we go in and pick our one die feature, we can go into our solid wire gold and platinum, and we'll now do a four axis pocketing operation. Now, so remember the settings that we did previously, 
Uh, so we're going to, instead of doing a slug drop, because really it's going to be pretty tough to do a slug drop here with this part the way it's mounted, uh, we're going to go ahead and do a burn. And we'll do it a uniform, I'll do it uh, uh, single directions fine. Uh, I've got my setting of my step over. Now the hole diameter is going to be a little different. The hole diameter will be that diameter of this hole here, which was 0.25 or 6.35 millimeters. Uh, now, as far as the z-axis position, I'm going to change this upper nozzle height. I will pick the upper nozzle height and do a right click and paste. It will paste the exact number of this. Now, I probably want to go above that. So, let's say I want to go another 50 or 100 thousandths above that. I'll change this to 1.67. So, I can physically alter that number to get what I want for the upper height. But it will still use the feature, of course, to cut the part. Uh, cut data, I think a rough and one skim. Now we won't have an issue here because I'm not trying to do a slug drop. So one, one skim should be fine. I've got eight thousandths for my step over. Uh, and let's go ahead and hit our OK button. Now I'll change the name too while I'm at it. This is a four axis pocket. Uh, let's just call it uh, burn. Or no, yeah, no course, fine. Either way. So we hit OK. That's going to calculate our tool path, and there's our tool path for the part. And you can see where it's going to start the wire. You get a top view so you can see a little better. And it's going to work our way in, cutting out the part. Get an isometric view, and we can run a simulation of this. Should show our material in our block, and now we start simulating it, running the material. You can roll it over. You see what's going on here? Just rolling around the part to get to the bottom. We're going to let it play its way out all the way finished. Uh, this is something we don't want to have to run several times. We're going to run this once to confirm that it's finished. And again, I can I can speed it up some by turning off like the fixture, and I can turn off also the target. That'll speed it up some. So you can do a couple little things like that to turn off and on this target visibility uh, fixture. Excuse me, visibility. Now we're almost done. Go ahead and turn those back on. And now when it's finished, now it does the skim, and now it's finished. Now before I, before I stop, I'm going to go up and hit this little button that says Save Current Simulation State. And the reason I am is so that I don't have to watch that simulation again. 